Hello, everyone, and welcome to Body Temple Dance in Our Fields. Happy Friday, happy Venus Day, happy Cancer season. Um, so I'm going to let you know a little bit about this Body Temple Dance practice, what to expect, and then I'll go dive into our themes for today. So before we dive into everything, um, I'm going to invite you to kind of settle in where you're at right now. You just do a quick opening of space to kind of arrive here. So <clears throat> if you'd like, you can find a comfortable seat um, wherever you're sitting, you know, sitting right now is great as long as you're comfy. And if it feels inviting and safe to you, you can close your eyes. If you prefer to keep them open, that is okay as well. So wherever you land, just allowing yourself to come to stillness, allowing yourself to settle into presence, into this moment. Taking the next hour to connect with ourselves, honor our emotions, honor our bodies, and aim to create some harmony or balancing or release that can help support us moving forward. And together as a group, we'll take one big inhale through the nose and one big exhale out of the mouth. Breathing in and exhale. Turning to easeful breath and just taking stock of any physical sensations that you can feel in your body. If it's helpful for you to do a body scan, you could start at your feet and move up to your head, noticing physical sensations, or you could start at your head and move down to your feet. Or perhaps you'd just like to tune in to your body as a whole, noticing what it says to you. Maybe you feel heat or coolness maybe a tingling or a tightness, maybe there's pain or stuckness, maybe there's a sense of, of trust that can be felt in your body, a sense of openness. And after you've checked in with your physical body, checking in with your emotions as well, and just noticing with compassion any emotions that you might be bringing with you here today. We're not trying to judge or change ourselves in this moment. We're simply arriving and noticing. If you'd like, you can place a hand on your heart and a hand on your belly or your abdomen. Just simply welcoming yourself to the space, intentionally connecting with your body, intending to move through this practice together, body and spirit and mind, all working together in harmony for your continued growth and healing. When that feels complete, you may drop your hands, open your eyes and come back to the space. All right, friends, so Body Temple Dance is a somatic movement and dance practice that was created by my teacher, Adriana Rizzolo. Uh, the aim is to help you feel and feel connected to your body. Um, additionally, it helps to move energy and stuck energies and stuck emotions that can be there uh, as a result of trauma that you might be carrying or just as a result of, you know, of daily life and the kind of resonances and impacts um, that your daily life and your interactions have. Um, but yeah, a lot of us carry carry things in our bodies. Um, that's kind of, you know, and I'm gonna get into this today, but that's kind of the thing with trauma of any kind, like little t or big t trauma is um, our bodies don't get the, the opportunity to fully move through and release these intense things that, that we encounter, that we feel. Um, 
due to different trauma responses. And so therefore it just gets stuck and it, it, it kind of can uh, pull us back to yeah similar reactions or like heightened reactions um, because we haven't yet moved these emotions, these energies, these memories, these sensations or experiences through our bodies. So this is like, you know, it's not going <laughs> to cure you uh, by any means, but this is one tool and one supportive practice that that helps you kind of get into those nooks and crannies um, and start to move some of that stuff out, as well as just to understand what you are carrying. Uh, so that's kind of the intention for this practice, but it's not purely about the kind of somatic scientific side of things. Um, it's also about, you know, the spiritual side of things because, yeah, body healing, soul healing, you know, it really goes hand in hand. And, you know, we don't have to, we're not just human beings, we're spiritual beings. And therefore we're, you know, also connected to spirit and to the universe and to the goddesses and everything like that. So this lineage of body temple dance is highly spiritual as well. Um, and so that will kind of be, you know, just like sprinkled throughout, um, depending on the, the specific practice and day. Um, as far as the structure of today, so um, in a moment, I'm going to speak about the themes of our practice today. We'll have a bit, a few minutes for journaling, and then we'll get into the movement portion. During the movement portion, you know, everything is an invitation and everything is a choice. So you are the expert, the sovereign ruler and the, you know, the leader and the, of your own body, right? Of your own body and your own experience. So I will give you invitations. You might see me moving my body in a certain way, but ultimately it's completely your choice how you want to move your body. If you want to listen to my invitations or if you want to just, you know, do your own thing altogether. Um, with that being said, specifically, if you need to modify this practice to accommodate any um, abilities, uh, different differently abled abilities or any like range of motion things or even just like pain or tension or tightness that you're having today in this moment please please do so um i am going to be standing for most of the practice however the practice can 100 percent be done seated or laying down even um, if you're seated you can modify and you know move move your body as such if you're laying down um you can either move your body in a similar way, or you can close your eyes and actually visualize yourself doing these movements, which is actually something that has been um, scientifically proven to be beneficial for, for folks who can't um, do these kind, same kinds of movements. If you visualize yourself doing them, there is a benefit to that as well. So again, you can do this practice standing, seated, laying down, visualizing, you know, that's all your choice. And of course you can change between those or modify or take breaks as you need to for your own body. Um, so while I want you to listen to your body and the signals that your body gives you, I also want you to play with the idea of your growth edge. Um, so the growth edge is like right at the edge of our comfort zone um, where a lot of magic can happen if we can kind of play around there because then we can, you know, expand our comfort zone, expand our capacity, expand what we're able to hold and move through. So um, remain curious about your own growth edge, especially around things like, um, you know, if you're thinking like, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to, like, I don't know what my body wants, that's okay. Like it's for people who, you know, ha have a hard time connecting to their bodies or maybe haven't been in a while or, you know, for many reasons, it can be hard to feel sensation or it can be hard to feel signals or it can be hard to feel intuition in your body. So if you don't know, um, that's okay. Like play around, guess, you know, experiment, try different things. And in the trying, even if it's just like a small motion, like what if I turned my wrist like this, see if you can kind of pause and stay with that for a moment and see what kind of reaction you have to that, right? Um, so yeah, play with your growth edge. Um, but and in general, I want you to be kind of tuning into your body sensations and your emotions uh, that you're holding in your body while we're doing this practice. And the last invitation is just to stay, if it is possible and comfortable for you, to stay moving the whole time. And again, that doesn't need, mean you need to be at 100% intensity. Um, go at the pace and the, the intensity that's right for you, but just the invitation to kind of stay moving the whole time while we're doing the dance practice. All right, I believe that's it. 
Oh, and you probably want to have some water nearby. And um, this practice is best done either with wireless headphones or just with the computer speaker. And you'll need like an open area to dance. And then at the end, you'll be invited to lay down. So if you want to prep like a yoga mat or bed or couch or anything, um, that will be for the very end to lay down. And you'll also want to have your handy dandy notebook nearby for you as well. All right, so that's all the technical stuff. Now to get into the <laughs> supposed fun stuff. So uh, this class is called In Our Feels because we're in cancer season and cancer season can be a very emotional time. Um, yeah, cancer is a water sign in astrology um, as well as in tarot. We associate water with emotions um, and we, you know, we kind of like this emotional sensitivity can be highlighted during this time for everyone, not just for people with cancer signs or cancer placements. Um, it can just be like a tender time. Um, you know, a lot of people end up crying during cancer season. Um, and this also happens during like other water sign times as well. Um, so just like being aware, you know, that we're, that we're sensitive, that we're feeling deeply and that's, you know, that's, that's the overall energy that we're in. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this emotional deep dive. So there's kind of two, two sides of this coin that I want to talk about today. And I already, you know, spoke about one side of it earlier when I kind of touched about like trauma and trauma responses and, and that kind of thing. And I'll go more into detail about that, but um the first part I wanted to talk about is like actually the beauty and the blessing and the gift of, of sensitivity, uh, emotional sensitivity. And that, you know, it might be kind of hard, you know, depending on your perspective to kind of like wrap your head around that or to fully accept that. I know for me, you know, yeah, my, my emotions, working with my emotions has been like this lifelong thing that I only feel like in recent years, I've made any progress on. And even so my progress is like very <laughs> spiralic and very much not, you know, uh, done or healed or sorted in any kind of way. Um, so this might feel a little bit spicy to like hear or talk about, but I want you to consider, and of course you don't have to agree with me, but consider the idea that it is a gift to feel deeply it is a gift to be sensitive. It is a gift to get to experience this like wide range of, of life and of sensation of like joy and elation and love and gratitude. Um, and even, you know, even sadness <laughs> in a way, like it all kind of like, you know, having this wide range of emotional experiences, human experiences, um, it helps us to each put the other one in perspective. So, you know, our joy would not feel as joyful if we felt it all the time, it might feel a little bit boring. Um, whereas when we have that sadness, it kind of um, helps us appreciate our joy more so. Um, as well as like, there's, you know, there's medicine and there's reasons for us to be, you know, in our sadness or in our, you know, grief even. And like grief is a good example because, Grief is really hard for a lot of people. Grief is something that a lot of people, especially around like death and everything like that, people carry with them for a long time. Um, and I like to see it as like grief is a, you know, a symptom <laughs> that you have loved deeply, that you have cared, you know, and that like the, the loss or the change or whatever it is, um, is felt so deeply because you were able to, to to feel that love, to feel that connection, to feel that care towards that thing or that person or that that situation that has changed or or gone away. Um, so in a way, grief is like this little like reminder of like, hey, like remember this love, like we're still holding it, you know, within us. Um, and you know, emotions also besides kind of like the range of emotions and the perspective of having different emotions, they also allow us to like, yeah, feel like compassion for others, um, feel empathy for others, feel like we can, you know, like we're, yeah, like we can understand what they're going through. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's just a beautiful thing. And it's, of course, like I said, like, it's not 
it's not always easy to be an emotional person. It's not always easy to be a sensitive person, but um, there, there is a lot of beauty there as well. So <laughs> that's kind of like part one is like, it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to cry. It's okay to even like have, you know, emotions that you're not quite sure where they came from. Um, it's okay to, to feel them and honor them because it's also natural. That's the other part is like, it's natural to feel these things and to be emotional and to, again, like experience this wide range of human experience. So there's nothing like wrong with you. I think there is this, you know, over cultural expectation that we should be kind of like put together and you know highly functional at all times which I think in a in part is related to like capitalism and white supremacy and the patriarchy because they want us to be able to be like producing um you know adding value into the economy or whatever um but we are you know just as we work with the cycles of the moon in this space um, we are very much cyclical beings. We're very much like all over the place and we're not, you know, meant to just be in one like level, level, like base <laughs> all the time. Of course, that's nice. And, and that's, the, I'll talk about that in the second part. Um, but emotions themselves are not, you know, problematic. So second part of that, um, again, as I spoke about in the beginning, has something to do with with trauma. Um, so, okay, so I'm no, no therapist, no mental health expert. I have learned about trauma within this like body temple dance context, um, because it is part of what this is about. Um, so I know some things and I don't know all things. So just kind of putting that out there as a baseline, but basically you've probably heard of this, but like when we have trauma responses, um, we often will go into fight or flight or freeze mode. Um, so, and it comes from basically a place of like a fear or a place of being triggered. And the thing that we are reacting to, um, you know, is what's happening in the present moment. And it usually, if we're talking about trauma and trauma responses, it usually has to do as well with things that have happened in the past. Um, so as I said in the beginning, when we experience trauma and we're not able to fully act out and release the emotions, the natural human emotions the, of, of like fear, fight, you know, whatever anger, um, whatever it is, um, when we're not able to metabolize those in our body, those emotions can get stuck in our body and in our nervous system. And so then when we later are going through a similar thing, so say, I don't know, like say I had a mother who never let me um, have an opinion. This isn't true, but this is an example. So say I had a mother who never let me, I had an opinion. And then, you know, every time I tried to say my opinion, she would just yell at me and she would yell at me and yell at me and yell at me. So then that's my, like my body kind of is like a uh, condition to kind of freeze um, or hide or whatever. Um, when that happens. Um, so that could be like the trauma, the, the root thing. And then in the future, say you have, um, say you're with like friends or coworkers or partner or something, and you're trying to share your opinion and someone doesn't agree with it. You might take that rejection of your opinion or a disagreement of your opinion as like a really strong rejection. And, and even though it's not logical, your body might react in the exact same way as it did when your mom yelled at you for having an opinion. So it's not logical and it's not necessarily, of course that's subjective, but it's not necessarily proportionate to the thing that's happening, but it's still very real for you and it's still very real for your body. Um, so that's the kind of like very, uh, you know, very simplified um, uh, explanation for what happens when we have a trauma response. So something happens in the present moment and we'll go into fight, flight, or freeze. So fight or flight is like, we are, and this literally, this these things are all survival instincts. Like this is literally lizard brain, like survival instincts. Like this is way, way back in our evolution that we learned these things, that our bodies learned these instincts, right? So they're very deep and present. So going to fight or flight, we're in our up, like activated up in our sympathetic nervous system. 
and we feel this intensity, right? So we either need to like, in order to survive the situation, we need to like fight or we need to run away. So we need to do one of those things to protect ourselves, right? Um, and so when we're up in the sympathetic nervous system, let's call that like the, you know, elevation the up, that's like, you know, anger, um, anxiety, like these kinds of things are like those emotions that happen. Um, the other thing that can happen is the opposite is going like all the way down <laughs> into your parasympathetic nervous system. So that would be like a freeze response. Um, so that would be like um, getting quiet, disassociating from your body, feeling scared, feeling sad. Um, those are some of the things that can be associated with that. So again, like, you know, and we're talking about nervous system, we can either be like super elevated up in the sympathetic or super down in the parasympathetic. And what we ideally wanna be is in the middle. <laughs> That's called a regulated nervous system. That's called a balanced nervous system. Um, a settled nervous system and it's the goal isn't to always be in that safe middle zone the goal is to be able to get activated feel those emotions the anger whatever and then to be able to release it and come back down to standard or to, to to feel sad to feel down and then to be able to come back up so that goal is to like be able to move through all these zones and come back to the middle um, and again because of trauma or just because of you know ourselves, like whatever is going on with us, we might not be able to easily move through. We might get stuck up here or stuck down here and not be able to find our way back to middle. So that you know, <laughs> that's a big picture topic, um, and that's what you know trauma healing is all about. Like being able to either work through the root causes of those things through like talk therapy or something like that, or to work with our bodies to be able to change how we how we move through our activation or triggers in that way so what I wanted to talk about um is some are some you know physical uh strategies skills interventions that you can work with to help yourself regulate your nervous system because you can you can change the way you're feeling through working with your body. There are other ways to change the way you're feeling. Of course, there's allies like, you know, herbs. Of course, some people choose uh, medication. Um, there's crystals, you know, there's all sorts of things and there's um, therapy there, you know, literally like there's so many tools, right? That's, we're all on that path. We know about some of them at least. Um, and in addition to outside tools, you can work with your own physical body to change the way that your nervous system is feeling by helping to release those emotions that are extreme in either direction, right? Um, so that's kind of what I want to talk about today. So this is not going to be like a comprehensive list. This is like a list of things a combination of things that I've learned from my teacher, Adriana, um, as well as just things that work for me. Um, so you can, of course, like look at this and see, you know, see what works for you. So I'm first going to talk about like the, there are three, uh, three phases to this body temple dance practice. Um, the first phasing face is unwind. Second phase is shake and embrace. And the third phase is surrender. You'll see it in a moment, but in the unwind, we'll be doing these kind of like circular movements, this literally like unwinding, um, moving in a circular motion, creating space. So we'll do that more in a second, but this kind of movement, this kind of round movements um, is good for when you're feeling kind of disassociated, down, like sad, um, you know, in, in that lower place these kind of gentle movements can help you get, get out from there and come back into presence and come out of disassociation. Um, the next kind of movement that we do is a shake, which is literally shaking the body. And again, we'll do a lot of it today, um, but that shake and that kind of like bigger expression of the body where it's like the first movement is more gentle and you're not really like um, elevating your heart rate too much. You're kind of just like letting things move, right? This next phase, this middle one shake is like really intense, um, 
in a good way <laughs> and it and it elevates your heart rate it generates heat and it really allows energy and emotions to move so this is really good when like if you're feeling anger or anxiety or frustration um if you're feeling kind of stuck like stuck um and if you're feeling like overwhelmed, um, or again, if you need to like complete a cycle of stress. So again, that like completing the cycle of stress or completing a cycle of emotion is what allows you to not carry trauma in your body. Allowing yourself to feel it all and then release it and then move on is what allows you to not carry that forward with you. So if you feel like there's stuck energy, stuck emotion, anger, frustration, anxiety, like, ah, you know, <laughs> shaking is a really, really, really good way to come back. Um, and then finally, uh, the last phase that we do is like surrender, where basically usually we're lying on the ground, um, kind of like with the heart, you know, heart open, just kind of lying um, and also connecting with the universe. So we're not only like alone. Um, so this is kind of when you if you're feeling like grief or like you're feeling alone <laughs> um, and you're kind of, you know, you want to like you, you want to receive um, that would be a moment to kind of move through that kind of practice of like, um, laying down, surrendering and like connecting to the universe, connecting to something greater. So those are the three types of body temple dance movements that we do. And then as far as just talking about like specific emotions. So with anxiety, um, which, or anxiety or stress or something like that, um, you can focus on your breath. That can be a really, really helpful regulating tool working with your breath. So specifically exhaling out of your mouth. Um, I also like to do like, uh, like, like a wind sound, like, like, or something like that. Like that helps me as well. Um, if, if it helps you, you could also um, like inhale, you know, maybe let's say to like a count of four and then exhale to a count of eight or inhale to a count of five and exhale to 10, whatever is comfortable for your body, but making your exhale twice as long as your inhale. Um, that is something that um, signals that the parasympathetic response, the relief from that stress, right? Um, taking a walk um, or another kind of accessible movement um specifically if you can again like get the heart pumping so maybe like a fast walk or something like that um that can that can help um shaking again i said shaking is good as well for releasing anxiety um like chanting um or like humming like making a sound making a vibrational sound um can help stimulate the vagus nerve which is part of that as well about like the nervous system regulation um, and then of course, like there's other, I wrote down also like calming meditations or healing sounds. Like there are other tools outside of your body as well. And of course, as I said, there's herbs, there's crystals, there's so many things, but um, yeah, breath, exhaling, taking a walk um, uh, or chanting or singing or making sounds can be good for anxiety. For anger, um, again, shaking, again, exhaling out of the mouth. Um, you can also do what's called a lion's breath. I'll do it. It's, it looks pretty silly. This is a yoga thing. So you basically exhale and you stick your tongue out. So it's like, and it's just silly, uh, but it's fun. So you could do that lion's breath. Um, uh, screaming, <laughs> yelling, um, not at someone, you know, uh, not in a way that scares someone. Um, and also be careful, protect your throat, your vocal cords, um, but you could scream into a pillow or you could just make a loud sound, like a guttural sound into a pillow. Again, we're talking about releasing anger. Um, you might wanna like punch a pillow or stomp your feet. Like again, we're not hurting anyone and we're not hurting ourselves, um, but having that like physical, you know, physical <laughs> release actually can complete that, that cycle of, emotion as well um stomping the feet fluttering the lips like um and uh my teacher also likes to do um like roaring like rawr, like you make claws like physically make claws with your hands and then you like make a roar sound like you're an animal that can also help and then finally for sadness or disassociation so um gentle stretches like gentle stretches, whatever that means for you, or gentle yoga, uh, gentle walks. Um, you can like rub your body 
Um, you could like hug yourself, um, yawning, um, going outside, um, being in the sun, um, placing your hand on your heart and your belly. Um, you can also co-regulate, which basically means like being near or touching someone or something. Um, so you can co-regulate and that helps you to both to calm your nervous systems, but it can help you. So you can work with um, an animal, uh, like a pet, um, a person, if that's safe and available to you, um, or you can connect with the earth, um, the earth herself, or it might be, you know, it's not quite the same as like a living thing, but if, you know, if you don't, can't access any of those things like hugging a pillow or, or a fuzzy blanket, like something where you feel held and connected, but yeah, it's better to co-regulate with, um, with something alive or with the earth if you can. And with the earth, I just mean like lying on the grass, um, like letting your body touch the earth, um, letting yourself breathe and kind of slow down um, a little bit. Um, and then again, a non, non-body technique, but um, connecting to spirit or like prayer or something like outside of yourself can help you potentially. And then um, another tool is like a body scan. So if you're feeling just like disassociated or stuck, just like trying to kind of like we did at the beginning quickly, just like tune into your interior space and seeing if you can name what you're feeling or what you're, what you're sensing um, physically or emotionally. So it, again, that might be hard for you depending on how you're feeling, but that could be a tool as well. So these are all tools that we can work with, um, you know, and again, even, you know, me, like I know these things, I wrote this list for you all. Um, and it still can be hard for me to reach for these tools when I'm in a super activated state. Like if I'm up in my parasympathetic or sympathetic rather, like if I'm like buzzing, you know, like it, there's actually your your brain isn't able to like access all of its normal function if you're in that elevated of a state. So by talking about these things, by writing about them, by putting like maybe a post-it of like maybe one or two or three of these tools that you wanna try working with, these physical tools that you wanna try working with, um, that you know having a visual cue can be something that's helpful or just an idea. Um, yeah, but usually like something, something tangible or, or some kind of action plan um, if you, yeah, could be helpful for you to, to reach for these tools, because knowing about them is different, uh, from reaching that for them, of course. All right. So I hope that was mm, not too much technical information. Usually like, yeah, usually I talk more about like energetics and spiritual side of stuff. Um, and we are going to, you know, have some spirit at the end of today as well, but I just wanted to really give you some some tools because again while I think it's good and natural and wonderful to feel um I also know it can be really hard to be stuck in your emotions um it can it can be a lot and it can be debilitating at times um so these are some of my favorite tools again this is not um therapeutic advice it does not uh replace whatever you need in terms of therapy or medication support, you know, anything like that, that's your own personal choice. And please consult with your own uh, medical advisors for those things. All right. So let's just do like a quick little <laughs> shake because that might have been a little intense. If you want to just like let your shoulders flop, maybe exhale or flutter your lips. <clears throat> Again, we just kind of like, maybe that was you know, intense to hear about, maybe you felt sensations in your body. So, you know, this is always available to you anytime you want to like reset, you can just kind of shake and flop and flutter yourself. All right. So we're going to take just, mm, just five minutes here and we're going to do a journaling question. And so the journaling question is like, how, how can I tend myself when I'm feeling such and such emotion. So if there was one of those emotions that I spoke about, anxiety slash stress, um, anger slash frustration or sadness or disassociation, you know, if there's one of those that feels particularly resonant for you, that feels present for you often, um, maybe pick that one, or maybe you can speak about multiple of them. But the question is like, how can I tend myself 
when I'm feeling this or when this emotion gets activated or triggered in me? Um, and what, what would feel supportive for my body in those moments? And again, if you don't know the answer to that about your body, practice tuning in, you know, now in this moment and asking your body, like, when we feel anxious, what would you, what would you like? And maybe it's a sense or a word that comes, or maybe it's an image of you moving in a certain way. And again, if you, if you don't have an answer, like that's okay. Um, but again, thinking about these kind of movements and breath and different things that I just spoke about these strategies, which ones are resonant for you? Or do you have your own strategies? Do you have other things that you like to do? Like, for instance, I, um, I didn't put this on here, but like when I'm feeling really, uh, like anxious and stuck, sometimes I like to do the dishes, um, because having that physical thing, um, it, it gets me out of my head and it actually helps my body to calm down. Um, so that's my own, you know, thing, <laughs> maybe that would work for you or guard. I mean, gardening, you know, of course really helps me as well. Again, like doing things with my hands, physical tasks to get, get me out of my head. So thinking about that, um, I'm going to put a timer on for five minutes. I am going to put some music on. Um, and then after that, we're gonna, we're gonna move.
right, so finishing up. Any last thoughts? And we're gonna get ready to move. Um, yeah, so have a drink of water if you need. Let me go ahead and get started. All right, so you can start in your seat where you're at, if you're in a seat. You can start with some gentle seated stretches here. So maybe taking some neck rolls, moving slowly, gently. Just arriving here. Good. Again, for your own body, paying attention to what feels good for you. Maybe bringing some, a little bit of like a massage of the fingers into the hair, into the scalp. Remembering to breathe as you do this. Maybe rubbing the arms with the hand. It's kind of welcoming the body, letting your body know it is safe to, to be and feel here. Maybe taking some intentional exhales out of your mouth. any other seated stretches that you'd like to. So maybe that's some shoulder rolls. Maybe that's some side stretches. I'm just very slowly arriving. And if you want to make any sounds at all at any point, during this practice, all sounds are welcome. No matter how weird and wild, they are welcome. All right, and again, any other small movements you'd like to take here? Maybe rubbing the legs, that's enjoyable and accessible to you. Expanding and contracting the chest. All right, beautiful, everyone. I'm going to invite you now to stand up if that's something that's within your practice today. Before we move, we'll just keep on with some standing stretches. Any kind of standing stretches that feel good in this moment for you. Again, you don't need to copy what I'm doing. You're welcome to move however feels good for you. If you'd like to take a forward fold, bending the knees, you can. Perhaps clasping the elbows with the opposite hands. Maybe swaying a little bit. If you've folded forward, you can gently sway back up to stand. Never 
We're going to begin our orienting practice. What this means is you're invited to walk around your space where you are and look around and notice what's here. Notice what objects are here, what colors, and just allowing the sensation of your feet to touch the floor, helping you to anchor into this present moment. And again, as you do so, as you walk around the room, looking around, orienting yourself in presence and safety. And again, breathing as you do so. I'd like to invite you to connect with something beautiful in your space. So maybe that's a piece of art or a plant, or maybe that's the view out of your window. Whatever it is, finding something beautiful. And if at any point you feel overwhelmed or like the emotions or sensations in your body are too much for you or are getting to feel very intense, I invite you to look back at that beautiful thing that you found and allow yourself to reset and reconnect to that beauty and that presence as a way to help you ground. Just one more minute of this, again, remembering to breathe. And again, if at any time you wanna take any exhales or anything, you are so welcome to. going to begin our unwinding practice. So what this means is starting with our feet, <laughs> we're going to create some circular motion. So you can either lift your foot off the ground or keep your foot touching the ground, whichever is available for you. Begin to make some circular movements here. You can go from big to small if you'd like, making a little spiral, being sure to practice on the other side as well. So moving from the feet up, then so moving up to the ankles, then maybe the knees. We're gonna just work with these circular motions and you can either stay in place or you can kind of like walk as you do these motions. And again, this is our unwinding practice. So again, moving from the feet, slowly moving up the legs, moving up to the hips, making maybe some big circles, maybe touching your hands to your hips, maybe changing directions, playing with what it feels like to do big versus small circles. And in general, during this practice, I want you to change directions in your space, not just facing the same way the whole time, but changing it up, getting a new perspective. If you haven't already, moving those circles up to your, your torso, your chest area, remembering to breathe. And it can also be a, like a bit of a, bit of a wiggle it doesn't need to be exactly circular as long as it's like round and flowy all right let's bring our hands into this now and as you do so you can continue moving the hips and continue moving the feet and continue moving the knees and ankles we don't need to just isolate parts of our body so we bring it up to our hands our elbows and our shoulders the other thing we can play with is not being symmetrical. So playing with different motions and different sides of your body. If you haven't already, bringing those circles all the way to your whole body. Playing with these circular motions, remembering to breathe. If you want to do any 
sighs. This is a great time to do some sighs out of the mouth. So that would be like breathing in, and a big sigh. And again, any kinds of sounds are welcome during this practice. So following your own lead, being curious about how your body wants to move. Touching back in with sensation in your body. Noticing if there are any physical sensations present, any emotional sensations present. And just being aware, being connected to those parts of you. Again, changing directions if you haven't in a while. Picking up as much space as you need to, as you'd like to, as you desire to. All right. Now we're gonna move on to a bit of shaking, but we'll start it off gently with some bouncing. So getting a bend in your knees, keeping your feet flat on the floor and just allowing a gentle bounce to begin in your body. We're gonna work up to this uh, because it can be intense. So kind of like increasing that bounce, letting your hands flop, letting your arms flop, letting your shoulders flop, letting yourself be floppy. All right, and then maybe bringing up that intensity into a shake, so that'll be more speed, more intensity in that bounce, keeping the knees bent. If you wanna flutter your lips, you can. So with this shake, you can go as light or intense as you desire, as feels good in your body. If you're feeling like there are lots of stuck emotions right now, you might wanna dial up the intensity help yourself move through them and also as you shake you can shake in all directions you can shake your arms out shake your hands out shake your legs out you can even kick your legs if you want if that feels good or you can just shake them out to the side and keep the shaking motion going but you can either stay with just a shake or if you want to bring a little dance a little groove into it So. If you want to make a sound, like any sound, just go for it. If you want to make a roar, just go for it. You might see me jumping a little bit, bit. please only do that if that's the case of your ankles and knees and feet. Imagining with the shaking, you're releasing stuck emotion, creating space for ease, nervous system regulation, and settling.
right. If you have some water, take a sip. <sighs> so we have one more intense song. This is a total freestyle. So move your body, your booty, however you want. You can shake, you can unwind, you can just dance. As calm or intense as you want. You can play with taking up space. You can play with different kinds of movements. You can play with being small and tall. Whatever feels good. Or just groove. get really silly and irreverent. If you're crying, dance through those tears. <laughs> Change directions if you haven't in a while. Again, if you want to make any sounds, sighing, fluttering the lips, breathing, go for it. The last minute, so let it all out. Let it go. In a second. <laughs> there we go. Your heart will go on. You can sing if you want. Last moment of intensity. Let it go, let it out, let it through. <sighs> Take a breath, drink some water. We're gonna wind down. Mm. We'll stay moving, but we're gonna tone it way, way down. You can either walk around the space, you can put your hand on your heart and belly, feeling your heart beating, letting your breath be what it is, feeling the heat you generated, the life force within you. Like you can do any kind of gentle motion. So that could be like swaying back and forth or gentle standing stretches. If you continue to move around your space, you bring a little bit more flow, whatever feels good. Or again, just simply walking with your hands on your body. Set sail to the night. 
invite you to begin making your way to your spot to lie down and if there's any stretches you'd like to what take on your way to laying down on your back standing or seated or ground stretches taking any little stretches or wiggles Setting yourself up really well, wherever you're laying down. So maybe you would need some cushion under your head or your knees or a cozy blanket, or maybe you need a fan because you're sweating, whatever it is. Get cozy and set up there. And as you arrive to where you're laying down, closing the eyes if that feels safe for you, and touching in with your body, with your inner world. Seeing about any emotions that might be present in the body, noticing, taking note, Asking the body how it feels. Asking the body if there's anything you can do to support it in this moment. Or any kind of breaths you want to take or supportive little movements or placement of your hands on your body. If there's anything that could be even more comforting to you in this moment. Or simply being with yourself and your presence. And this mantra. Om Gam Ganapateye Namaha. This is a mantra and a prayer to Ganesha, Hindu God, to help remove obstacles. So you're welcome just to receive this mantra, this prayer. And as you receive the vibration of these words, envisioning obstacles being cleared and released, creating space to move towards comfort and a settled and regulated nervous system. And if you'd like to sing along to this chant, you are most welcome to do so. Om Gam Gana Patayi Om Gam Gana Patayi Om 
very gently coming back into presence with your body, with the room, with the sensations here. actually going to invite you to take these next movements or non-movements in your own time, moving as slow or as fast as you want. So the invitation could be to stay laying down or perhaps to do some stretches or if you'd like, perhaps you'd like to journal or write down anything that you felt or noticed or learned during today's experience. But whatever you decide to do with yourself now, taking intentional time to honor and integrate everything that you've just experienced in your body, in your energy and your emotions. I'm gonna leave you here in your beautiful, open state to choose your own adventure whatever you choose i appreciate you so much and i'm so glad that you took the time to join in this practice today wishing you much care and support